Prop the mic, PTM. We're here on what is it, Tuesday, right? Tuesday, April twenty fifth. Yes, sir. Coming off of a strong night, it was uh, a- another sweep. We've been we've been hot lately. We have. We had a 12, 12 and three Friday. Then we had four and zero oh on Saturday. And yep, two and two. Was... Two and two was a push on Sunday, and then another four and zero. Oh. So. Beautiful. It's good, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll send out the overall metrics for the uh, the NBA postseason. But it's been really good, and uh, and you know, I just personally find it the lines are sharper, but you also have like you know some really good relevant recent data to go off of. So I think that that counterbalances it. So um, all right, you ready to dive into um, one? We're going to cover one game uh, today. Um, we've mm-hmm. already got some picks coming out on Twitter for the later games, but we figured we'd just deep dive into the first game of the night, which is the Hawks at the Celtics. Um, you ready for that? Absolutely. All right. So, um, first of all, the Hawks are just a horrendous team on the road. 17 and 24, uh, is their away record. So they've only won 17 games on the road this year. And the Celtics, on the other hand, are 32 and nine um, at home. So they've only lost nine games at home. So that explains, you know, why the Celtics are minus 13 in this game. And but the total is 230. So at least there'll be points scored. The the real question is who's scoring those points. Um, yeah. <laughs> so game one, the Celtics won by 13. Game two, the Celtics won by 13. Game three, Hawks came back and won at home by eight. And then game four, the Celtics won by eight uh, in Atlanta. So um, so that 13-point line actually might be generous, um, given that DeJounte Murray is out of this game, too. But we'll see. Um, all right, so what what is, uh, what's standing out for you here? Um, all right, so I think the first place we have to look, obviously, is like what what's Atlanta starting lineup or who's who's playing the minutes for atlanta here uh in murray's right. absence right so uh going through a little uh uh digging through some pat he, he's missed he missed six games this season uh so we have some data to look at there uh bogdanovich uh was the guy who seems to uh pick up the most minutes in his absence uh yeah. he was he was um if not a star, he started most of the games, especially towards the end of the season. Um, the games he missed in December, I don't know if he started everyone, but he definitely closed everyone um, and finished uh, top five in minutes. Um, so I see him uh, getting good run here tonight. <clears throat> so I like his points. 16 and a half points. He's done it in five of six games uh, this season without DeJounte, averaging 22.2 uh, points in those six games. So um, that's that's pretty good right there. Uh, just, you know, he hasn't had this success against Boston, but he hasn't had the minutes either, right? Um, yeah. So uh, in the games that Murray's missed this season, he's averaging 31 minutes in those six games, um, has played as high as 36 uh, and as low as 27. So that's the range we're talking about. Um, so real quick, at 30 minutes, he clears uh, 16 and a half, 64% of the time. 31 minutes, it goes up to 72%. 32 minutes goes to 80%. And 33 minutes played 90% of the time, nine of 10 games. uh, He he gets that done in. That's with or without Murray, right? That's with or without, yeah. That's just minutes, yeah. That's pretty good. And and in these game scripts where, um, you know, the assumption is that the Hawks are going to fall down big. And and it could happen early. It could happen in the first quarter. It could happen in the second Mm -hmm. quarter. But, you know, this is the end of the season, so it's not like yeah. let's rest let's rest our guys up for next year, right? They're going to keep their starters out there and try to try to make this a competitive game. Mm-hmm. But this he's the kind of guy who has the ability to get you back in a game, right? Really good yep. shooter. Yep. Um, Three-point capability. So I could see mm-hmm. him playing 35 minutes tonight, um, potentially. Yeah, for sure. I, one thing I did want to point out, though, he is one of these guys that either he's got it or he doesn't that night. Right. And, you know, early on, like if you so what I wanted to point out is if this happens to be one of the nights that Bogdanovich doesn't have it. Right. And you and you bet on him, I would immediately, you know, you could tell in the first quarter, especially if he gets the start, uh, if he's got it or not, go and live bet guys like I would look at A.J. Griffin 
uh, to pick up stuff there. Aaron Holiday. There's some talk that Aaron Holiday might get the start over Bogdanovich in this game. Um, but either way, he would probably get some extended run. And even Jalen Johnson, those three guys, I would look at live bets on them if you see that Bogdanovich does not have it because they will for sure then get uh, extra run. Yeah, th- there's a there's definitely a train of thought. Um, and Brogdon is a good example of that, of you keep your sixth man coming off the bench, right, uh, in, in these mm. spots, just because that's the, the unit they're used to playing with. That's the yeah. time they're used to playing. So you throw him in the starting lineup, yes, they'll get more minutes, but they might also get out of rhythm. So I could see him potentially not uh, starting. He is projected to start right now, but I could see him, you know, I could I- see them changing that. I think he starts because they're going to need his minute. Like he's, like you said, he, he's probably going to have to play 35 plus minutes. If you don't start and you're sitting out the first five minutes of, of each half, it's hard to get to 35 minutes. Then, yeah. you know what I mean, like, so I, I think he does get to start here, but um, that was just some of the chatter I'd heard. Nice. Nice. All right. Anybody else on the Atlanta side? Uh, One other, I, I don't love it, but it was uh, it's uh, compelling with, uh, Murray's absence. So Capella's got five games without Murray. He cleared 10 and a half points. He, he's, uh, hasn't been great against Boston. I don't love the play. I think, you know, uh, with Robert Williams and, uh, Al Horford and these guys, uh, it's, it's tough for, it's t- tough matchup for Capella here. Uh, he's averaging almost 14 points though in those five games. So I wanted to point it out. Probably, it's probably not something I'm going to play, but, uh, I think it's worth pointing out. Yeah, I saw that too. I got really excited about it. And then I thought about, again, the game script. Very important to understand, you know, is Capella going to play big minutes if they fall far behind? The answer is probably no, right? For two for two reasons. One is he he can't shoot, right? He's, he's all around the rim. The mm-hmm. second is he can't hit free throws either. So, if, yeah. you know, the way Atlanta gets back into some of their games, especially with Trey Young, is getting mm-hmm. to the free throw line over and over and over again. If mm-hmm. Capella's getting fouled and he's shooting at whatever, 60, 62% or whatever he shoots, that's not going to help them catch up. So I could mm-hmm. see him playing very few minutes if they fall far behind. Uh, they tend, they actually tend to lean on Okongwu more when, uh, when, when they're behind. But so, yeah. yeah, I saw that trend, but again, I'm laying off of that as well. Yeah. Um, I had one other on land. I just wanted to get your thoughts on this. Um Trey Young probably plays 40, 41, 42 minutes in this game tonight. The whole right? game. Yeah. The, the whole, whole game. game. The whole game. <laughs> so do we do we like a Trey Young like turnover over turnovers or something in this game? I do. Yeah. I looked at I looked at that. The only reason why I didn't uh write it down is just because he was pretty good at controlling the ball in Atlanta. But mm-hmm. if you look if you look at his turnovers in the first two games of the series, I think he had five yeah. turnovers in each each of those mm-hmm. games. Uh, and his line was what two and a half? Four or three and a half? No, f- no, it's four and a half. Oh, four and a half. Oof. Yeah, yeah. I would like that at three and a half. Yeah, All right, three so and a half. Yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe we keep an eye on that. As uh, a lot of these books won't even let you do turnovers till the game starts. So maybe yeah. you uh, keep an eye on that. And and uh, you know if he if he holds out without getting a turnover in the first six minutes of the game, maybe it'll come down to three and a half or something like that. Then you I mean it is. Like, I think it's it's like even money at four and a half. So. Uh, yeah, 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 that's tough. That's a yeah. lot. Of, that's a lot of turnovers. That's a but, lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, but at forty-three minutes, he's going to play tonight. I, you know, in Boston, you know, hostile environment. I like it. Yeah, and he's going to be he's going to be trying to force some things tonight, right? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. All right. I didn't I didn't have any plays on the Atlanta side. I just don't know what to expect from them. Um, yeah. I feel like Boston's a lot more consistent. Uh, and I, I was a little worried about the Boston side just because if this does tend to be a blowout, they may choose to play less minutes. But yeah. then I looked at the first two games, like Tatum was playing, I think Tatum played 38 minutes in every, or more in every single game this series. So mm-hmm. I actually don't see Boston, unless they get up by like 40, which I, I don't see happening. No. Um, unless they get up huge, I don't see Boston like totally resting their guys because no. the next game, who do they play next? Philly? They would play Philly, yeah. Right? When is that game's probably not for what another three or four days or something like that. I, th- I think they have the ability to move it up if both teams uh, go early, but yeah, it would be for at least a few days. Yeah, so it's not like they're playing in, in a day or two. So yeah, um, yeah. So okay, so anybody else on on Atlanta side before we move to Boston? Atlanta, no, no. All right. So what do you like on Boston? You know who I like on Boston. 
gotta go with our my man Malcolm Brogdon. I just yeah uh, yeah. He fits into the narrative too because he is a bench player. Yeah. So I could see him getting extended run as well if they do take a big lead. So um and and forget even that. Like even if it's a close game, the guy's been pretty pretty consistent um sure. scoring um the whole the whole series. So which yeah. which of his many stats do you like there? So I like his par. Um, it goes to like we've mentioned this a few times. Role players at home in the playoffs. These are the guys you need to target. Um, I think I think they have some of the best value in the playoffs as the lines get sharper. It's the role players. So um, I like his par twenty one and a half par minus one thirty five. Uh, he's done it in four of uh, five uh, against Atlanta, um, averaging twenty two point four. So just getting there. Um, but then you look at his minutes here. Uh, at 22 minutes, 83% hit rate, 23 minutes goes up to 87%, and 24 minutes goes to 90%. Um, so he's played in that range. Uh, he played as high as uh, over 28, 28 and a half minutes in game in game three. Uh, and then game two, he played almost 23. So he'll be right in there. Um, I don't see him having an issue getting to this. Game Game four, he was what, like 22, 23 minutes as well? Uh, 22.6 yeah 22.6 yeah so yeah it, it's weird how they're they're kind of fluctuating on his minutes but um but he really takes over when he's out there he makes he makes that second unit his so um mm-hmm. i mean the guy the guy should be a starter like on any other team he's a starter he even, is, even yeah. on this team he might be a starter but i love how boston plays him as as a like as a six man because it really strengthens their their you know their yeah. lineup so um cool all right, that's nice. Not a, not surprising since you know you <laughs> play Brogdon pretty much every Celtics game, um, and and it's good that the Celtics will be moving on, so we'll get more more and more Absolutely. Brogdon. Uh, anybody else you like? Uh, no, that was really it. Um, yeah. All right, I got a few more. Let me throw out some some ideas and see what you think. Um, yeah. Marcus Smart uh, over five and a half assists. Uh, minus 135, uh, smart at home with 29 plus minutes. He has crossed this in 17 of 21 games. Uh, that's 81%. And if you look at smart season, pull up props.cash and look kind of at his stats this year, he's mm. got this like lull in the middle of the season where he was missing, 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 right? He was mm-hmm. hot at the beginning of the season. And yeah, yeah. And I think that was around kind of when he was coming back from injury and, and mm-hmm. you know, probably still a little bit injured. So he's a very streaky player. And right now he's very hot um, uh, scoring and um, and getting assists. So his assists were down last game. Um, but his other uh, four games against Atlanta this year, he's had six, seven, uh, six, eight, and four. The two that were at home were seven and six. So he's crosses both home games. I see him getting there again tonight. Uh, thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I see the, uh, it, it looks pretty good. One thing, uh, I, I would just mention, I think is, uh, DeJounte Murray, not a great defender. Uh, Aaron holiday is probably going to pick up a lot of those minutes of those minutes. He's a much, but much, much better defender. Um, and you know, obviously he, he's small, so he, you know, he'd be guarding smart. Um, so maybe just, you know, smart, seeing a different look, having a better defender on him changes things up a little bit. So I, I would just, just throwing that out there. Okay. No, fair yeah. point. Um, all right. That's why I brought a menu with me here. So, uh, right. next we got Derek white, who I know you don't like. Um, but regardless, uh, he's <laughs> been very, very good against Atlanta this year, 15 and a half points. Mm-hmm. Uh, Here's here's the games against Atlanta. 16, 18, cleared those. Three, so he missed that one, but he only played five minutes that game, so we're tossing that one out. Then the first two games of the playoffs at home, at mm-hmm. home, 24 and 26, crushed. Then he went to Atlanta, had 11, so he missed in that one. And then game four, he had 18. Um, mm-hmm. So if you break down his season and look at games where he's played 31-plus uh, minutes at home, which I think he's done in every playoff game, uh, he is 12 for 16 so far this year, which is a 75% hit rate. Um, and he's 10 for his last 11 with those same stats at home. So he's been really hot, um, especially at home. I could see him, um, you know, putting up a 20, 20 spot tonight. 
Sign Thoughts? me up. I'm in. I'm in. I, oh, I love like, this. I, I like this play. Yeah. Another like role, like role play role players at home in the playoffs. I I love I love this play here. Um, we cashed the other day. You had I had Brogdon. You had White. We both cashed. I don't know if that was game one or game two, but one of them. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, let's let's do it again. Okay. And my last one, um, not a role player, quite the opposite of a role player, but uh, Jason Tatum. Um, mm-hmm. I was look, I started looking at his rebounds, but it's pretty high, nine and a half rebounds. Um, he has done this as 12 of 16 games at home this year with 38 plus minutes, and he's played 38 minutes in every game in the playoffs. So that's mm-hmm. a 75% hit rate. So that's not that's pretty good. Um, mm-hmm. But then I then I had a different thought said what about tatum threes so okay. he his his line for threes is three and a half so he's got to hit four threes but game one he went three for seven from three so he missed mm-hmm. it there but only attempted seven game two he went five for nine so he attempted two more and cleared game three he went four for 11 mm-hmm. um, so he cleared and increased his three point shooting by two more game four he went four for 13 so in cleared again and increased by another two so the guy is shooting more progressively more two more threes every single game Mm -hmm. so i don't think that will put him on track for 15 threes tonight but i could see him easily putting up you know 11 12 13 i think he's just going to try to go for the knockout punch tonight and i think he does that uh usually he'll do that by just bombing away at threes Uh, so um yeah i uh I like that. I like the increased. Uh, I like the increased opportunities here. Um, I'm just trying to see what he in the playoffs when he's taking forty. Yeah, forty percent of his shot attempts are coming from uh, from three. Yeah, um, he's just he's just firing away like from three. Yeah. Um, um, I like any shooting. He's actually he's shooting thirty eight percent, which is actually a little bit higher than his season average. So yeah, I. Uh, yeah, I mean, his last two games, he, I mean, he shot four for 13 last game, which is pretty bad. Yeah. Um, so if he t- if he attempts, I think, over 10 threes, I think he cashes this. And yeah. I think he will. I think he's just going to try to, like, put them away tonight. Um, and he, he loves making that, like, that big shot and having the crowd erupt. Yes. He's, he's all into that. So yes. it, it's a thought. I think, g- in general, with three-point plays, don't go too crazy. There's a bit of, of luck and shot mm-hmm. selection and all this behind it. So I like the play, but I, I wouldn't go, uh, I wouldn't put a big one on it. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I think that Very, wraps it up. Yes, that was good. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll probably have, some, we'll have some picks for the other games. We have, we put one up already for the Clippers game, Terrence Mann. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get some up from this game too. And uh, enjoy the games. All right. You too. See ya. Bye.